Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I am going to do a Casing Tuesday card this morning. And if you don't know what Casing Tuesday is, it's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and we use it as a template or a blueprint to create our own card. Now, if you love the card in the catalog and you have the supplies, you can definitely recreate the card. It is just a way to get us stamping, to get us to look at layouts and colors in a different way. So I hope you will join me for this live. And if you're watching the recording, um, please feel that you can participate too by leaving me comments below and I will answer them later. Okay, so I'm just gonna give everyone like a little minute to get on here. So I'll talk about a couple of things. Um, as you all know, I create one tutorial a month that I give my customers free with a purchase. And this month is this little rainbow box tutorial. And it's this cute little um, box and I have Skittles in here. It's very hard for me to open it right now because all the Skittles would spill out. But um, just so you know that I always give people um, or my customers a little gift um, and that's a gift of a tutorial when they purchase from me. And right now celebrations going on so that's awesome so for every 50 or 100 dollars you spend you can get a free product so um that's a great promotion and next week starting on let's see march 3rd yes march 3rd we have a um, bunch of new products that we're adding to the lineup five new products so um that will um make the celebration offering a lot larger. So I hope you're looking forward to that. All right, so let's talk about today's card. And I love the layout for this card because it's really a good one, especially if you're new to jump in because this one's a nice, easy layout. And even if you're a seasoned stamper like myself, um, I loved this layout because it has a lot of potential and I actually made an extra card to show you along the same lines of the card that I made so um, I'm excited to share that card with you too so let me um, show you first of all what the card is now this card is from a product that was a celebration offering it was a card kit um, it has since sold out but the cool thing is is guess what we can recreate this look pretty easily because it's got like a card base it's got some it looks like some paper then it's got another layer of cardstock and um, maybe I, I didn't actually get the kit so I don't know what all the pieces are but definitely there's a little piece of vellum that goes um, in the center and so I really try to recreate the feel of this card today and Catalina she is our resident. Um, she does up all the cart, like the pictures for the, the group. Um, and she also does the sketches. So she created a sketch for you. If you're new to stamping and you don't really have an idea of like what the layers would be, what the sizes, this is a nice um, sketch that will give you the basic measurements. My measurements are slightly different, but that's okay. Like um, you can fudge the measurements a little bit to fit what you need. And you can find that sketch on my blog. If you go to the link down below, um, just click on it and click over to my blog and you'll be able to see both of those images as well as my cards for today. So um, those are the cards that the card that we're starting from. Let me move over to my other camera so I can share with you and um, the um, card I made. Let me say hello to everyone that's joined me this morning already. Lisa, Connie, and Amy. Um, and uh, Amy says it's 23 degrees Fahrenheit in Washington State. Ooh. <laughs> I, I'm, um, that's, that's cold. And, um, here in the Boston area, I have to translate because I, I do things in Celsius. I'm looking on my phone right now. Probably should mute my phone so it doesn't call in the middle of things. 
So right now we have 9 degrees Celsius, so that's getting close to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That is not typical for Boston in winter, so don't think to book your travel um, to Boston in February. It's not really a great month to come visit us. It's a great city, but I think summer is much, much nicer in Boston. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're having um, uh, kind of a warm February. So um, I don't know if we're gonna get all our snow in March or I don't know what, but there's no snow on the forecast for the next week. It looks like it's all rain and um, warmer weather. So um, we'll see. And I hope it warms up for you. I hope your spring um, gets there soon, Amy. Okay, let me stop blah, blah, blah. And let me move over to my card and actually creating it. So here's my card for today. I just love this bundle. It's called the Under My Umbrella um, bundle. And of course, you know, if you buy both this um, punch, the umbrella builder punch and the stamp set together, um, you save 10% over if you bought them separately. So I always try and buy my pieces together if possible. And I love this card because it's just so beautiful and um, got nice colors. I also use this Pleased as Punch paper which is great. One side has the raindrops and the other side has the umbrella. So guess what I did? I took the easy route and I actually punched out my umbrella. So to make it really, really easy. So I love the places punch paper. Um, and don't let me forget at the end, I'm going to show you my alternate version of this card. Um, yeah. So I'll show it to you at the end. But anyway, it, it was not a hard card to make, but I'll show you a few tricks of how I made mine along the way. So let me put this out of the way. And let's start off first. Let's um, get these pieces that I'll need for the card. So the first thing I want to show you is I've got a piece of the Pleased as Punch paper. I cut it up so I had this layer here is five and a quarter by four inches. Uh, I did it that way so I could get, if I wanted to do make six cards, I could get six of these pieces out of a sheet. But the reverse side has the umbrella, so I also want to use that. But when I'm looking at the umbrellas, I wanted an umbrella that had a little bit more color to it because um, my background paper is a little bit bland. So I want something kind of pretty. So I wanted this one, but it's hard to get the punch in, but I didn't want to destroy my paper. So I just kind of cut in around um, this paper just to cut and I left a little bit of, of white edge um, because it does punch a bit of a white edge so when you're coming around make sure you leave about an eighth of an inch when you're coming around and then let me open the punch and I know this comes right up at the top so I can slide my punch in here without kind of um, getting into the other paper right away and then I just go ahead and punch that and that will be my umbrella. And so now my paper is still all intact, so it's not in like tiny little tiddly bits in the in the paper pack. So it just kind of keeps things together. I'll probably pull these little pieces off so they're not like that. So as I go through and I punch the other umbrellas, I will kind of do the same thing as I did there. Okay, so I'll need that. I also want to stamp my boots. So I'll just take a regular piece of Whisper White and I'm going to take the Memento ink and I'm going to stamp these little guys. Fortunately, we don't have a punch for these, but they're so tiny that it doesn't, it's not a really big issue. So I want to show you how I colored these and I find it easier to color when it's still um, together um, on like when I haven't cut it out yet because once you cut it out you're dealing with a really tiny piece and right now I can kind of hold over on the edge so it's not too too bad so okay I'm going to start off with my flirty flamingo and I'm just going to give it kind of a base coat of light uh, flirty flamingo and because I'm using the brush tip, I kind of hold it on its side just a little bit. And then I'm going to come in. 
do this one here. Just want to show you how I did this. And um, I'm going to kind of leave that. Then I'll come in with my dark flirty flamingo. And I'm going to kind of brush down on the bottom and the side. And then I'll take my bullet tip of the light and now I'm just going to use little circles to blend that edge out so it's more variegated. Now you have to take a little time to work this because these are alcohol markers and it does take a little time to blend so it looks good. I'll come along here. Yeah, and you know what? I I don't know why I chose pink boots. Well, actually, I do know why I chose pink boots. I tried blue boots. I tried yellow boots because yellow um, rain boots are kind of my favorite. But then I settled on pink boots because, hey, um, they look really good with the, um, um, with the umbrella. So why not have pink boots? I think I want a pink boot. Uh, uh, I think I want some pink boots now because I like when you're raining, when it's raining, I want a bright color because it's so drab and gray. So when I go outside, I want to wear something bright. So my go-to has always been yellow, but now I kind of like just any bright color. I'll take my dark flirty, flirty flamingo again, and I'll just hit the top, the top edge of those boots. And then for the bottom of the boots, I'm going to take my basic gray dark, the bullet tip, and I'm just going to hit and make gray soles like that. So that is how I color the boots. And then I need some scissors and I'm going to cut these out. Yeah, I know some of you don't like it when there's not a die, but you know, this can be kind of therapeutic too. If you have to do a bunch of these, like just stamp them, color them, and then cut them out in front of the TV or while listening to an audiobook. Sometimes our world moves a little too fast these days, and it's nice to slow the brain down a little bit and just concentrate on doing something slow instead of always having everything be fast, fast, fast. What do you think about that? Do you have something that you do that's like really slow as well? Um, I have a bunch of things. I, I like to walk, so like that really kind of calms my brain down a little bit. Look, doesn't that look cute already? Okay, so now we need a um, an umbrella hook, so um, or the handle. Um, so if you want the handle, the silver handle to face this way, then you have to put it through the punch with the a white side facing up. Uh, and if you want it to face the other way, then you put the silver side facing up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and punch that. And so now the silver side will face this way. And I don't think this came through very well on my photograph because it looks kind of white on my photograph. I didn't kind of get a shine going on. I photographed it last night, so there wasn't very good light. Um, so you could probably not see that this was silver, but the person who gets it will know that it's silver and it will look neat. It will look like a, a handle. Then I'm going to create this little um, greeting piece. So again, I'll take my Memento ink and I'll just stamp this down on here. And oh, shoot. Oh, no, I have my punch right here. Oh, my goodness. I'm actually... And if I can remember the name of this punch, um, oh shoot. If I look this na name of the punch up, it messes with my screen. So I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to take this and just, um, it's the punch. It's the, the name is, oh, 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 actually if I punch page open, it's called Timeless Label. After a while, all of the punch names sound a little bit the same, like we've got the classic label, you know, and it just, um, I've, I've lost my memory for the names. 
Um, so I'll just center this in here and then punch it out. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, I'm getting down to, I think, what all the pieces I need for this card. So I start off with a card base. This is Pacific Point. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored and a half at the four and a quarter inch mark. Then I take my designer series paper piece. It's from the Please Does Punch. It's on the back of the this umbrella paper. And take some glue. This would be neat to do a project that showed both the front and the back side. Hmm. I don't know if that would be messy or not, if it was if it's oriented the right direction, but I've got a glue, a glue plug. I just pulled it out. Hopefully my glue will flow now. So I want to put some Tombow on this side. Very little because this is a light paper and it I said hopefully I mentioned the dimensions it's five and a quarter by four just put it on my card pump like that now this is a little tricky part so I've got a piece of Pacific Point and this one is four and a quarter by three inches. I have a piece of vellum. I cut that an eighth of an inch smaller on both sides. So this one's four and one eighths by two and seven eighths. And they will layer up like this, okay? But with vellum, you have to try and kind of hide the adhesive. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to adhere everything to my vellum piece and then I'm going to put the adhesive behind the images so hopefully it hides most of the adhesive. All right, so let's start with this little piece. And I find with vellum also, it's kind of affected by wet. So I'm gonna use um, snail adhesive. It's our dry runner adhesive. I'm just gonna put some top, like snail on the back of that. I don't know if you can see my piece really well. So let me put the Pacific point underneath it. It might shift a little bit because it's not glued down yet. But I want to put this about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the vellum and a quarter of an inch from the side. So that will just go right there. Then I'll come in and I'll do the boots. And the, the boots will be just a tad bit lower, about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. And then we'll come in and do the umbrella. So for the umbrella, I wanted to add the snail as well, but the snail is about a quarter of an inch and this is only about an eighth of an inch. So what I did is I took a scrap piece of cardstock or paper and I'm running the adhesive right on top of the cardstock so that um, when I lift it off, and I'm just going to rub the edges to get rid of the stickiness on the edge. But um, it's it's on my uh, handle, but yet it's not um, uh, all over the place. Like it's going to be, you know, the excess adhesive is on here. Okay. My ability to speak this morning is somehow, I don't know. We got up really early this morning to go for a walk, a little earlier than normal. Um, and I don't know if I've recovered yet. I am a morning person, but it was just getting light out when we walked this morning. So I'm just kind of angling my handle and seeing where this piece, the umbrella piece will land and that looks good. So then on the back of this piece, I'm gonna add three dimensionals just to give it a little height. And these okay they're sticking to me all right so I'm gonna stick this right on here like that Ooh, I like the little floral umbrella I used to have a really pretty floral umbrella that my grandmother gave me and um, I lost it while I was in Germany and I don't usually lose things, but I accidentally left it on a bus and yeah, I never got it back. So 
Um, it was pretty. It wasn't the blues. It was kind of, it had red, red and navy. Um, it was just really pretty. And it had a nice little ruffle on the edge. I just really loved that umbrella. Anyway, I don't have it anymore, but this one's very pretty as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the adhesive behind these things. So I'm going to take my snail and put it behind the umbrella, put it behind this label, and put some right behind the boots. Now, last night when I was photographing, this corner that had nothing um, was having trouble staying down. So I have to put a little bit of adhesive up in that top corner and hopefully it won't be too obvious it'll be a little obvious probably should put like something in that corner it's just like you know it's kind of hard because you don't want to always have something obvious like right in that corner because it just kind of you know kind of want that corner blank so maybe I should have arranged it a little differently but yeah it is what it is right if you can have so the other way to do this um, is if you have adhesive sheets and you put adhesive all the way behind the vellum, that will make the whole piece have that that shading, that adhesive shading on it. So then it won't be obvious that you have adhesive right there. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. and add this to the front. Maybe someone has a great vellum tip for me that I haven't thought of yet. But yeah, you can put the whole adhesive sheet behind there and that really helps keep everything down too. Okay, so now I need, oh, it's way over here. I created a little bow last night because yeah, I don't like to tie bows on camera, especially really, really itty bitty tiny bows. And I'm going to take a piece of, let me see what I have. I have my take your pick tool, but I don't have the right attachment on it right now. Oh yeah, maybe I can switch this one around. Here we go. So this has the pointy end. So I can take one of my glue dots and turn it into a glue blob just by poking at it and kind of winding it around the end of this pointy thing. So now it's a blob and I'll put this right down here. And then I can stick my bow on it and it's not quite as big as the glue um, dot, it's a blob. So it's just gonna stick right behind that little dot. And then I can add some print stones. So, um, the other side of the take your pick tool or I know like people use this side too. Oh, I'm just not good at this take your pick tool thing. Come on. Okay. So people take this. Oh, it works so well and do this. Oh my gosh. I need to do this more often. Look at how easy this is. This has got putty on it. So you can just pick it up and like stick it on there. I really want to stick something up there to hide it, but I I don't, I, I want that to be blank, that area to be blank. So I'm going to leave it and um, suffer the consequences of um, you either have a little floppy end piece of vellum up at the top. And if it this piece had been down at the bottom, it wouldn't have made a difference. But yesterday, because I kind of pushed it down, it kind of was bowing a little bit at the top. So I had to See, last night I did a better job. It kind of just looks like a little squiggly. So I might need to work with that and get some of that adhesive off on the corner and make it just a little bit tinier so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't show as much. All right. Look at those two umbrellas. Aren't they pretty? I kind of like the rainbow umbrella a little bit better. It's kind of cute. Okay, let me show you my other card. I think you'll like this one. Look, I made a card with the tulips. So this paper also has, let me grab my paper. It has a side that is tulips and it's got the green side. So here's 
a smaller piece of the paper. It's got the tulips and it's got this green side. So I punched out the tulips and I punched out the leaves. And then I created this card. It, same measurements as I used on this one, except I turned this one so it is portrait mode rather than landscape. A couple other things I did on this one. Okay, so I didn't want to have to stamp and cut out the stems. So I just took a sheet of uh, cardstock and I cut an eighth of an inch off of it. So I used that to create my three different stems. Um, I adhered them to the backs of the tulips. Then I arranged the tulips. The stems were then like hanging off here. Like I cut them longer than I needed. Um, and then I just kind of left them dangling and I took my leaves, arranged them, adhered them. These leaves are off the edges. These leaves down here are cut off a little bit. So once I had them adhered and arranged, then I turned it over and I cut everything off right here at the edge of the vellum. I really like the way that this looks because down here it cut off some of the leaves. So um, this tulip is like a little closer down to the bottom. So I like the look of the leaves down here, even though they're they're cut off a little bit. And then I took, what's the name of this punch? Oh, it's the classic label punch. I have to go look again. I can't keep the punch names in my head, especially especially the punches that are just kind of geometric shapes. I can't keep them in my head anymore. Um, so I stamped happy birthday from the um, terrific tulips. Is it? Timeless tulips, my gosh, from the timeless tulip stamp set and um, stamped it, uh, punched it out with a classic label punch and then just used um, the little bow, to, uh, tied it a little bigger and then I used rhinestones on it as well. So just another variation of the same layout. Love this and if I had had more time, I would have created um, cards with the other papers in um, the Pleased as Punch series. It's great paper. If you don't have some already, I definitely recommend it. So what do you think of those cards? Um, I had like a lot of fun with this one. I think mainly because I love the paper so much, it just inspired me. So um, uh, the other paper has those little tiny flowers that matches a punch in the celebration catalog. And then, oh, and then the heart, um, there's also heart paper. So um, a little past Valentine's Day, but the hearts don't necessarily look all Valentine's-y, so you could definitely still use the paper. Great, great paper. All right, oh, Lisa is joining me all the way from Louisiana. It's Mardi Gras right now. How fun, what a fun time of year. And we will be down in um, Louisiana in August because in New Orleans because um, Stampin' Up! is having a leadership conference down there and I'm planning on going to it. So it will be my first time in New Orleans. Um, when we lived down in Tennessee, we lived in Memphis for a number of years. And um, it was shortly after we moved there that um, the Hurricane Katrina came through. And so it has taken a while for everything to recover and get back. So we actually never visited New Orleans while we lived in Memphis, which was kind of sad because it was relatively close by. But now I will get the chance to see it and see um, your lovely city and um, state. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, let me see if there's any questions. Um, good morning, Catherine, Yvette, Karen, and Lisa. So glad you joined me this morning. And um, if you have any questions, um, please post them below, even if this is no longer live. And um, if you want to join our Casing Tuesday Facebook group, um, look down below and um, uh, click on the link. And I approve new members every week. And uh, it's just a great way for you to share your cards. I mean, it's great if I can share my cards, but if everyone else can share their cards, it's neat and we comment on each other's cards. And it's great to see how diverse the cards can be from one layout. Like we start off with a card like this 
And, you know, I myself came up with two cards, turn it this way, um, that just based on that design. So it's great that, you know, there's so many different possibilities. So it really opens up your eye to how a sketch can be used in so many different ways. So even if you don't want to post your card, I encourage you to join the group just so you can see all the samples that we post each week. All right, guys, I will have another tutorial later this week. I have not yet designed it, but uh, it's going to be a 3D. Um, so I have a few on my list of things that I want to try out. So probably won't be tomorrow, it'll be either Thursday or Friday. And um, I will be coming live um, from YouTube. So if you haven't already um, joined my YouTube channel, um, you can pop over there and, and join it. And um, uh, that way you can get notified when I go live over there. All right, guys, have a great week. And I will be back next Tuesday with another Casing Tuesday card. Bye-bye.